Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Today I am unboxing the April of 2024 Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard Kit called Daisy Days. And I'm also sharing 20 cards that I made with the contents of the kit using my latest quarterly card making challenge, Kendra's Card Challenge 14. I usually do an unboxing video first, but I'm combining the two this week. So this video will be just a little bit longer than my usual videos. But the Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard Kits are one of the monthly subscription products. They're an amazing value and are packed full of card making supplies. When you subscribe to the kits on the Pink and Main website, it will be shipped around the 15th of the month, but you can still sign up and purchase through the end of the month unless it sells out. Your subscription will change to the next month's box on the 1st. An additional benefit of being a subscriber is that you receive 10% off other products in the store. If you'd like to subscribe, I'll have a link down in the description box. This is an affiliate link, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and this helps to support my channel. Now with each kit, you get a mesh zippered pouch that's big enough to hold your card stock. And it also includes a page that lists all of the contents along with the colors in the color palette. And at the bottom, it shows the hashtag that you can use if you want to share your projects on social media. You can also search using the hashtag to get additional card making inspiration. And then on the other side, there's some card sketches to give you some additional ideas on what you can do with the kit. Now the monthly subscription kit base price is $34.99 and an automatic shipping charge is added based on your location. Now the kit includes colored cardstock and this month's kit includes this beautiful orange foil cardstock. Plus there are five sheets of 100 pound 8.5 by 11 inch colored cardstock in Streetlight, The Park, Riverwalk, Barbershop, and Pebble. Plus, you get two sheets of white heavyweight 110 pound ice rink cardstock. Now, this month's paper pad is in a different size. These pattern papers are five and a half by eight and a half. Now, we usually get six by six papers, so this is something different that Michelle is trying out this month. Um, but let me get this open here so you can see the different patterns. There are 12 different patterns, and they are single sided sheets. And since they're printed on heavier weight paper, you can actually use these as card bases if you score them in half at four and a quarter inches. So as you can see, there's some fun patterns here. There's some crisscross patterns, some fun stripes, chevron, some plaids. And then there are also some tiny polka dot patterns in the different colors of the color palette. So this should be a lot of fun to work with. It includes this exclusive confetti mix that's great to use as embellishments or for making shaker cards. It also comes with these sticky pearls, also in all of the colors of the color palette. And these are also great for adding embellishments to your cards. And they come in different sizes and there's a bunch. Ooh, and I love this embossing folder. It is a six by six brick pattern and it's called Bricks. Now I have brick stencils, but not an embossing folder, so I'm really excited about this one. And then this is the stamp set. It's called Daisy Days. It has a large cluster of some daisies, plus three butterflies, along with six sentiments that say, Sending cheer, hello friend, thinking of you, you are my favorite, wishing you the best, have a beautiful day. And it also comes with coordinating dies that cut out all of the stamps, including the sentiments, which is awesome. So now that you've seen what all is included in the kit, I will share how I tackled this kit to make a bunch of cards. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I create a quarterly card making challenge where I show how to cut six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper with little to no scraps to create a bunch of cards. And on April 1st, I released challenge number 14 that includes 15 new card sketches. I offer this free PDF download during the quarter that runs from April 1st through June 30th of 2024. Now for details about my challenge and how to find out how to get the printable, you can visit kendrascardchallenges.com and I'll have this linked in the description box below. But anyway, I usually make a bunch of cards with the Crafty Courtyard Kit using my new sketches at the beginning of the quarter. And since this month's paper pack includes a five and a half by eight and a half inch paper, 
I had to make some modifications since my cutting templates are for six by six papers. But when you download the printable, you'll see that I include measurements on each of the card sketches for all of the pieces and layers. And this is helpful so that if you wanted to just create one card or a few cards rather than all 15, you'll have what you need. In attempting to cut my papers, I'm looking at the larger pieces on each of these cutting guides here, and I'll start with those and try to cut the other pieces from what's left. I initially thought I would just use three sheets of pattern paper and only make a few cards, but I'm starting with this crisscross pattern here, and since there's a half inch strip on the far right of the cutting template for paper A, this one is pretty easy to cut following the guide using the five and a half by eight and a half inch paper. So I just cut along the eight and a half inch side to six inches and then cut the rest of the pieces shown on the cutting template. Now for the two large pieces with the triangles, I'm saving that to cut those um, at the same time. And I'll do that here in just a bit. For the second sheet that I cut, I'm using the orange polka dot pattern. And I'm using the measurements that are shown on paper D. I cut that large piece first and then I cut the two inch square. And I decided to go ahead and cut another two inch square since papers B and C also have that on their cutting guide. Um, like I said, I thought I was gonna start out using just three sheets of paper, but I end up using all of them. <laughs> but next I cut the rectangle piece for card four, and then I set the remaining piece aside. Now I still have this blue polka dot pattern to cut, but I'm gonna go back to these two rectangle pieces from paper A to cut the triangle since I forgot to do that before. But um, basically what I'm doing is I'm measuring at one and a half inches, and I'm marking it with my pencil along the short edge, and then also again on the left side long edge. And I'm lining up the two dots that I marked with my pencil in my cut line on my paper trimmer. And I'm cutting this small triangle piece off. And these are going to be for card three. And I'm cutting both of these pieces at the same time. And then I'm taking the corner of the top left piece and I'm lining it up with the bottom right corner in my paper trimmer to cut this at a diagonal. And as you can see, it's shifting on me a little bit. But it's better to have them be the same size than be off a little bit. But now I have my my pieces for cards one and two. And I'm sorting all of these pieces into cellophane bags that I have numbered one through 15. And this just helps to keep me organized. Now, like I already mentioned, my initial plan was to only make a few cards. Um, before cutting more paper, I decided to go ahead and cut my layers using the measurements on the sketches for some of the cards. So um, for sketch one, you'll need two rectangle pieces that measure one and a half by four and three quarter inches. And I'm using the orange foil cardstock to cut these. I also went ahead and cut the two three by three and a quarter inch pieces for card number two. Now that I have the layers I need for cards one and two, I need to cut more squares for card three out of a different pattern. So I'm gonna cut two additional two inch squares of this blue polka dot paper. And so now I have what I need for card three. Now moving on to card number four, I'm using the scraps from paper A to cut the one inch strip shown as paper B on the card sketch. And then I'm taking the blue polka dot pattern to cut the two end strips that are shown as paper C on the sketch. So card number four, calls for several different patterns. And then after um, doing this, I decided to move on to card seven. Again, at this point, I thought I was only making a few cards. So you'll see me flip the, the printable over here to the next page. So for card sketch number seven, I already have the back panel cut. So I just need to cut the two small strips that go on each side of the center rectangle. And so I'm using scraps from the first paper that I cut. And I also need two half inch strips on this sketch. So I'm cutting that from the blue polka dot pattern. And I need to replace the blade on my paper trimmer because the edges are fraying. So when this happens, I take my sand eraser to help remove those frayed edges. So now I'm gonna set this aside to look back at card number three. And this is when I realized that I needed a fourth pattern. <laughs> so, um, I know I need to cut another piece at some point, but I'm looking at the piece that I cut for card nine, and I just need to trim that scrap down to measure four inches. And then I cut another half inch strip from the blue polka dot pattern to measure the same. And I saved the piece that I cut off for the banner. 
Since I have this long light blue polka dot piece, I figured I could go ahead and cut the strip for card 11. And then I'll just need to cut a circle from one of the scrap pieces of pattern paper, plus some strips and smaller circles from some matching colored cardstock. So here I'm just looking at the cards that I've selected to make, to make sure that I have all of the layers that I need so far. So back to card number seven, I'm now going to cut my layers, this time using street light cardstock. Again, all of the measurements are on the sketch, so I went ahead and cut the two quarter inch strips needed for card 11 also. And I used a two inch circle punch to cut out a matching yellow circle for that circle piece on sketch number six. Now this is where I decided to bring in some additional patterns. I'm cutting that two inch square that I need for card three and also the long diagonal strip for card four from this striped pattern. And I'm gonna cut the layers for these two cards from some dark blue cardstock off camera. And since I now have a lot of this striped pattern paper left over, I looked at the sketches that I haven't done yet and decided to cut the pieces that I'd need that would work with this striped paper. So I cut the strip for card five the one with the oval and since I have this five and a half inch piece I decided to cut these into two two and three quarter inch pieces so that I could make more cards using sketches one and two so I'm just repeating the process of cutting the triangles from these pieces at the same time and I'm just going to stick those extra triangle pieces into the bag for card three and I cut the remaining layers that I need from the barbershop cardstock and then I went through all of the bags that I had pieces in to make sure that I had everything that I needed, my layers and card bases. Next, I used some stitch dies to cut out the focal point for card number one. I thought that this foil would be really pretty. I also used a few other stitch circle dies from my stash to cut the circles for sketch 11. So at this point, I have a few cards to cut the remaining layers needed and put them together. But in looking at all of the scraps I had laying around still, it was really bugging me. So I decided to keep on cutting and I did this off camera and I managed to cut all of the pieces that I needed for all 15 cards plus a few more. And I was able to use up all 12 sheets of pattern paper for the most part. I stamped all of my images and sentiments in bulk off camera using barbershop ink. And then there were a few that I used some uh, Versamark uh, embossing ink and white embossing powder on top of some barbershop cardstock, which you'll see when I go through these cards. So now that I have all of the pieces ready to assemble the cards, I'll show you the process for each one. Now for the cards where I have multiple using the same sketch, I'm only going to show putting one of them together, but I will show you each of the finished cards right after I show the process. There are a few that I won't be assembling. I'm gonna set those aside to use as a card kit for my patrons. And I'm gonna put on some music, but I'll come back a few times to explain a few of the cards. I will also have listed in the description box the Copic marker colors that I used to match the colors in the papers.
Okay, so for card number three, this is probably the trickiest out of the whole bunch. Um, basically just to line it up, but I absolutely love this one. It is probably my favorite from challenge 14. But here I'm just gluing all of my layers down. But the key to getting this to line up is to start with the top left square. And I'm using this blue polka dot pattern for my top left square. So you'll start with that. Um, and you want to put the top, you'll line it up and put the middle at the point of the layer at a diagonal. And then you'll line up the square below it and continue placing the squares around them, trying to keep all of the spacing about the same. So you'll end up having to cut off what's hanging over the edge of the layer, but you'll use the piece that you cut off from the top left square down at the bottom right. So just be careful when you're cutting it. And those two extra triangles, I don't know why I stuck those in the bag because I don't end up using those. But one of the crisscross pattern triangles, when I cut it out, it ended up cutting crooked. So you'll see that I try to fix it with my scissors and I end up cutting it too short. But here I'm just gluing all of these pieces down, trying my best to keep the spacing right. And I do use my, my pen to mark the back so that I know where to put the glue. But these are the pieces right here that I was talking about. Um, that one that I'm going to glue on the bottom, it's, it's definitely not straight. <laughs> so I'm going to use the sentiment to cover that up. But uh, once I have that sentiment on there, you'll see that it's a little bit plain. Well, I don't want to say plain because all of these different patterns don't really make it plain. But I felt like it needed something else. So I end up adding a butterfly image on top of that striped square. So I use my long scissors just so that I can cut off what's hanging over more easily all at once instead of my short scissors. Um, but if you, you know, you're like me, if you have glue that's seeping out, you definitely don't want to use your, your good scissors like my, my fussy cutting scissors. I don't want to use that to cut off the <laughs> stuff that's hanging over the edge because I don't want glue all over those. And here, this piece is not actually on the sketch, but... It, it, to keep it, um, I guess, coherent so that all of the pieces are spaced the same, um, you'll want to add that little, little tiny piece there. But um, here I'm just going to glue this layer down and add the sentiment, pop that up with some foam tape and finish this off.
I'm making this a shaker card as I'm looking at the pieces that I have here I realized that I didn't cut the right size piece for the left side next to the square with the circle cut out of it but the sketch also shows two optional pieces that I did have cut but I decided not to use them luckily I had a scrap piece of the tan dots pattern and so I cut this to measure one inch by three and three quarter inches and I cut a piece of acetate to measure just slightly smaller than three and three quarter inches to glue onto the back of the circle. I adhered this down with some double sided tape and then I added some foam tape to the back all around the edges. 
and this is what's going to keep the confetti mix inside the little circle so I also add some diagonal pieces in those corners <clears throat> just to keep those confetti pieces from getting stuck where you can't see them now before adding the confetti mix I uh, rub some anti-static powder along the edges of the foam on the inside of this shaker piece and um, I glued down the tan dot piece and then I took the crisscross pattern strip and I'm cutting this into a banner and then I glued that down in the center of the tan piece as it's shown on the sketch and then um, this is where I'm adding those corner pieces just because I feel like it's it's a lot of that confetti is going to get hidden down in the, those corners and you won't be able to see it so hopefully this helps but um, I poured about half of the bag of the confetti mix down into the center of the square there I probably used more than what I should have but I love um, I love having a lot of shaker bits in there I think it, it makes um, makes it prettier and I love the sound of it even though you can't hear it when I show you this card at the end but here I'm just removing the adhesive backing and I'm going to carefully line this up to make sure that it's straight with that other pattern paper piece on the left and uh, it looks like everything's moving the way I want and here I'm just trying to decide where I want to put my sentiment if I want to use two butterflies or just the one but here is the finished card. I did end up adding some Love From Lizzie peel-off stickers to the outside of that banner just to make it stand out a little more. Card 15 is the last sketch on the printable and I'm still layering all of my pieces according to the sketch but I wanted to use the full cluster of daisies on the front of this card since the pattern paper square sticks out of the top left and the top right and I also started coloring one of the main daisies with a white colored pencil um, I like how it stands out I may end up coloring the rest of this but I just decided to uh, leave it the way it is and this is card number 15 after making all of the cards this is what I have left for scraps technically I made 26 cards because I set a few aside for card kits but I assembled 20 cards and this really didn't take me that long to do I think the most time-consuming part was trying to figure out how to cut the papers since I couldn't use my 6 by 6 cutting templates from my printable but I'm glad I was able to show how to make all 15 sketches if you'd like to play along with the challenge for a chance to win some prizes I invite you to watch my introduction video that I'll have linked above and in the description box it tells you what to do to enter and what prizes you can win these prizes include monthly prize packs from Pink and Main, plus a $25 gift certificate that will be given away at the end of the quarter. So if you love Pink and Main as much as I do and you like winning free craft supplies, you'll definitely want to check it out. Now here I'll just quickly show the cards that I assembled using the Daisy Days Crafty Courtyard Kit. I really hope that you like them and I hope that this inspires you to get creative. Let me know which card is your favorite down in the comments. Now these Crafty Courtyard kits really are a great value. Uh, plus they have some other monthly subscription kits available too in case you're not aware. They have a stamp of the month and also a stamp and die set of the month. And a foil of the month kit which includes some toner foil plus some toner sheets and some other fun things that you can foil. But this is a lot of fun to play with if you have a mink machine or a laminator. But if you'd like to subscribe to the monthly kits, I'd love it if you would use my affiliate link in the description box below. Again, if you're new to my card challenges, I'll have a link down in the description box to the introduction video that explains all about it and how you can download the printable to have a chance to win prizes for creating cards and sharing them on social media. I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to have you again on my channel soon. Have a wonderful day.